Today we're going to start a new series looking at hooking face data sets and how to actually use the library. So in this first video, we're just going to introduce hugging face data sets and I'm going to show you how you can actually upload your own very simple data set. So there are many different ways to upload data sets and depending on your data set, you will need to use different methods. So in this video, we're just going to have a look at the, the simplest of those. And with that, you will be able to upload any sort of tabular format uh, data. So let's start by just having a look at what Hugging Face data sets actually is. So Hugging Face is a pretty relevant company if you're, you're working in uh, machine learning and especially NLP. Their main library is called Hugging Face Transformers. Now from there we have access to all these really useful uh, models, both NLP and for other things as well, like BERT, Roberta and, and a, a ton of other things. But what we want to focus on is actually Hugging Face data sets, which is also incredibly useful. So we can come over here and we just have like a huge number of data sets and they all do different things. So we could come down here, we have Oscar, which is just like a, a ton of text data scraped from the web in a load of different languages. We somewhere have Squad here, which is a question answering data set, and we have many more. And you can also upload your own data sets. So if I come over to here, uh, you can see my profile with a couple of models and a few data sets as well. Now, what we're going to have a look at is a pretty simple one. So if we come all the way down here, we're going to go to this Reddit Python data set. And you can see in here, we have this, this text here. Okay, so we have these strings, uh, a, like the time stamp that I created it at, and a upvote rate ratio. So it's just from the, the Python subreddit, a few fields from there. It's nothing, nothing too complicated. It's just a tabular format, pretty simple. So we can come up here. We have James Callum, Reddit Python. We copy this. I'm going to switch across to Python. So first thing before we actually use Hugging Face data sets, we need to install the library. So pip install data sets. And from there we can, so in here, I'm going to just paste. It's going to be the same thing, right? James Callum, Reddit Python, which we just got from the Hugging Face uh, web page. So let's run this. I already have it installed, so I'm not running that again. Okay, you see down here, it's downloading the data, extracting them, and then uh, we get this. So this is the, if I, so it's literally from this here. So if I copy that, bring it down here, see it again. So this is just like an overview of the data set. So we see those different features or columns that we had in there and number of rows, it's not a big data set, it's very small. But that's fine for, for our example. So we can you know, iterate through our data set. So um, we could go like for record in, in Reddit and just kind of go through each one of those. Um, what I'm going to do is just go through the first, maybe like three. We'll, we'll print the record and yeah, we'll do that. Okay. And you see that we get these dictionary items. So we have the, the sub, it's Python, title, uh, the text, and, and, and so on, right? We got that data incredibly easy. And that, that's, I think, the one of the biggest selling points of this library is that we can we can just do this, like, it, it, like a few lines of code. And we have access to, I don't know how many data sets are on there, but there's a lot of data sets on there. And you, this is a, a kind of like small, almost silly data set. Uh, but you have things like Oscar and Squad on there, which are huge and, and, and uh, usually contribute to some of the, the big um, models, pre-training and, and so on. So it's really useful. So that's how you would use or, or how you pull in data from, from um, Hugging Face data sets. But how, how would we actually create our own data set? That's kind of what I want to focus on with this series of videos. So the simplest way is you can actually upload um, a set of different file types in a particular format. And 
Hugging Face datasets will, will just see that as, okay, this is a typical format. I already know how to process this and you don't have to actually do anything else. Okay, so there's almost like, uh, there's a few levels of complexity of, of the datasets. Let me explain those now. So the first is what we're gonna focus on this video. Uh, just simple tabular data. Right, and for that, we, we just upload, so we upload uh, TSV or what I, I, I prefer working with JSON line files. So JSON L, then my personal preference, you can use other things as well. Further on from that, you can use what is called a dataset building strip, script. So the, the builder script, well, we'll explore that in the next video. We won't really focus on it now. And this is really useful if you need to do some sort of data pre-processing first or a lot of data sets on the internet or you can find them, but they're kind of hard to like get access to, not get access to, but you have to download them from these random like corners of the internet and then you have to pre-process them a little bit and so on. And generally the owners of those data sets don't want you to just copy their data and put it on hugging face. So what you can do, obviously you need to ask them first, uh, but what you can do, and they're usually okay with this, is you can stream the data from their, their sort of data servers. And as long as you attribute them and everything correctly, they're usually actually really happy for you to go and do that because they, they want more people to use their data sets. So that is really a really good use case for this builder script level. And then further on from that, maybe, um, you know, things can just kind of get more complicated. So for example, what I will demonstrate is including images, right? So images in your, um, images in your data sets. And for that, you need to use a builder script, uh, but you also need to use different things. You need to use like a, something called a download manager. So a download manager. And that just adds another layer of complexity, uh, not just for images, but also if you need other things, like maybe you have dictionaries that provide mappings to different things in your data, um, things like that. So they're the three levels that we're going to focus on in this series. Obviously right now, just number one. So what we're gonna do is we'll take this data set. So let's remove that. We're gonna take the Reddit data set from here and we're going to uh, reformat that into a JSON lines file. So we're going to go uh, Reddit and we can just convert this into, let's say we convert it into a pandas data set. All right, we can actually, we can convert to JSON immediately, but I don't think that's actually JSON lines, so that's fine. But anyway, I want to use pandas because I think most of us probably have our data set um, in pandas at some point. So. I think it's usually a, a good starting point. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so let's imagine this is a starting point. We've just loaded our data set from wherever it is, and we have this we have this pandas data frame, and we have all of our uh, data in this sort of format. Okay, how do we prepare this to become a Hocking Base data set data set? Okay, first we need to actually reformat this pandas data frame into a records based dictionary. So let me show you. So Reddit to, I think it's to dict and you have to click, you have to write orient records. Okay. And this is going to give you a list of dictionary items. Okay. So very similar to if I didn't remove it, um, let me rerun this and show you. So if we come here, and we take a look at Reddit zero before we convert into a pandas data frame, it's the same thing. And if we add another code box here and go Reddit one, all right, basically every item or record in a data set is actually a dictionary. Okay, or we can think of it as a dictionary. This down here is going to do the same thing. It's going to convert our pandas data frame, which we create here, into that list of dictionary formats. And let me 
I need to do this. Now let's have a look at that. First three. Okay, so now we have this, um, you see we have lists and we have these dictionaries inside that list. Okay, one, two, three. We can use this to create our JSON lines file because a JSON lines file is essentially, essentially the same thing. It's basically a list of JSON objects uh, saved as a .jsonl file. That's, that's all it is. Um, so to create that, we need to import JSON and we're going to, so with open, uh, let's call it a Reddit demo .json L. Sorry, that's annoying with that in the way. So JSON L. We're going to write um, pretty much what you can see here. Let me remove these. I don't know what this is. Don't want that. And this is confusing. So let's remove that as well. Okay, so this here, that's all we need. So we, for line in Reddit, so for each one of these uh, dictionary objects, we write it to the file using JSON dumps. We add a new line uh, character onto the end of it. And that's our JSON lines file. So let's run that. Super quick, and now let's have a look at that file. So come over here. Uh, we have yep Reddit demo here, and then yeah you can you can see what it looks like here. Okay, so we have just these lines of JSON objects or dictionary objects if you want to call them that. So that is our JSON lines file. And now there's a few different ways that we can uh, use this to create a hugging face data set, and the most straightforward of those is it is very straightforward let me show you so we come over here uh, you you will need to make an account if you don't have an account on hugging face already it's it's free and everything so uh, it's not hard to create one uh, we go over to the left so click on your profile click on new data set maybe we can zoom in a little bit and then i'm going to call this um what did i call it over here, Reddit demo. Okay, so I'm going to call it Reddit demo. And public, yes, uh, you can make it private as well if you don't want other people to see it. I'm going to leave it as public so you can test it, I suppose, if you want. And so now, right now, we have this like empty data set. So we just go to files, we go to add file, upload file, and one thing just before I actually upload it, I need to make sure that it is called, so I should have here actually, I should have put train. So let's leave it as train for now. So what I'm gonna do is just rename it quickly. So we'll call this train and come over here, now upload it. Projects here, here, train. Okay, so the reason I called it train is because the sort of default, so you have different splits in your data sets on hug face data sets. You usually, or you can have, and you can have multiple, honestly, but typically you have a train split, which is just the default for all of them. Uh, you have validation split, test split, obviously like if you're from sort of machine learning, you, you recognize those terms. Uh, the train is just the default one. So because we're not building a data set loading script, uh, we should just call this train and then the uh, Huggy Face data sets will recognize this as the default um, format and it will know to load this this file. So I'm gonna commit those changes. Okay, so this is like a, almost like a GitHub um, interface. And in fact, it, it does use, like you connect to it with Git on your local machine and stuff and I'll show you how to do that pretty soon. And yeah, so if we go to files now, we should see we have that train.jsonl in there. Okay. Um, over here, we will eventually see that there is like a data set preview. It's not there yet. I assume because we, we literally just uploaded it. Okay, so upload. And now what we can do is let's go up here. 
I'm gonna come down and we called it Reddit demo, I think. So Reddit demo. Okay, download, extracts, come here and cool. We can see that we have that data set there now. So Reddit zero, there we go. It's pretty cool. Now, the other alternative approach for this is um, we can use something called a hugging face CLI. So I'm going to switch over to warp, which is just a, a terminal window that I use. So you can use a normal terminal, whether you're on uh, Windows, Mac or Linux, or whatever. Um, I'm going to CD into my, into the same project that I was just in. So projects, uh, HF data sets, I think zero, zero getting started. Um, I'm going to kind of activate my report, my environment that I was using. So it's ML for me, but basically you just need to make sure you have pip install data sets in there. So wherever you pip install data sets, that is the environment you should use. And now what we want to do is pip install hugging face hub. Okay. And I think I already have it installed. So I don't need to do it again. And then from there I can uh, hugging face CLI login. Cool. Let's zoom out a little bit. Now it asks you for this token. So to get that token, you need to head back over here. You go to your profile, I think. No, no, sorry, your settings go to access tokens and you will probably have to create a new token. So you create a new token, make sure it has right um, permissions, not, not just read permissions and you just copy it. So I'm going to copy that. I am going to enter it in here. Okay. So I've just logged in. Now you might get a little warning here that says um, that you need to save the Git credentials or something on your machine. If that comes up, just do that. Uh, it will give you a little command that you need to enter for that. And okay, from, from here, what I want to do is go back to the repository that we created. So here, I'm going to copy the web address up here, go back to here, and I'm going to do git clone this, right? That is going to create a new, this, you know, it's, it's git, so it's going to create a, a repository. So we can see we have CD Reddit demo in there. And inside there, we have our train.json that has come from the Hug and Face dataset repository. Now, uh, we can modify the files in here like we would in a normal sort of GitHub or Git environment or Git repo, sorry. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a, a readme, okay? So, in reality, maybe you want to upload your data in, in this form, but I've already created a dataset, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to create a readme, okay? So, you know, Reddit demo, uh, Reddit demo data set. No, don't need to put anything major in there. I'm gonna save that and get status. You can see that I, I have this, so on track file. So what I'm gonna do is just get out everything, status, cool. And I'm just gonna commit that. So added readme. And then you just do git push. You don't need to do git push upstream or all that sort of stuff. You just do git push. Cool. Now, if we have a look at the at here, so you can see there's nothing here at the moment. Let me refresh. And now you can see we have this um, Reddit demo data set. Okay. We go in files and we can see that in here. Okay, we just added that. So you can do the same with your with your data sets uh, or your data files. If you have a large data file, you need to also uh, use git LFS, which is the large file storage of, of git. So let me show you quickly how to do that. So to do that, you have to do git LFS install. And there's probably a good chance here that you're going to get a an error saying something like git LFS is, is not a recognized command or something along those lines. On Mac, uh, or, or well, the reason for this is because you don't actually have Git LFS installed. So on Mac, to fix that, you have to do um, this. So 
brew install git lfs. I, by the way, this uh, terminal is called warp and it's incredible. <laughs> so, as you can see, it just kind of tells you what you need to write. So I definitely recommend having a look at that. It's free. Um, brew install git lfs and that will install um, git large file storage. If you are on Linux, the command is slightly different and you will need, I'm going to copy this for you. Uh, I will copy it somewhere. I'm not sure where I can, maybe in the, in the video description, I, I will include this. Okay. So this is for Debian or, or Ubuntu. Uh, you have to run this. I'm not going to run it because I, I'm on Mac. And then you run this. Okay. And for Windows, you have a Windows installer apparently for this. So after that, after you've uh, installed it, if you if you had that issue, you'll git lfs install again. And then after that, you need to run this in your repository to enable um, file sizes that are above five gigabytes. Okay, so you can you can do that as well. And then at that point, you can do I think it's git lfs track. Right, so you would do this, get LFS track, and maybe I want to track the train.json file as a large file size. Okay, so now that's kind of modified it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get add that again, JSONL. Okay, and now rather than that being uploaded as a normal file, it's going to be uploaded as a, a git large file size or LFS file, so I can, can do that so uh, switch to get lfs and then we get push okay and for some reason we can't, it's kind of off the screen i'm not sure why okay so we should see that it does this uploading lfs objects and uploads that now obviously for this train.json l file that wasn't necessary but for larger files um, it, it is okay. So anything, I'm not sure the exact file size where you need LFS. I think maybe it's like 50 megabytes. So it's not even that big. Um, but this is really cool because you can, you can, as I said, you can go above five gigabytes uh, in a single file. Although I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, but we'll we'll talk about different approaches to dealing with these large file sizes in the future videos as well. So. Yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this has been useful and yeah, I look forward to going through Hug Face datasets in a little more depth in upcoming, upcoming videos. So thank you for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.